I'd like to begin, though, with a rejoinder. And um, there's a video that I'm sure you have seen uh, going around. It has my name on it. It's a video that's taken from the studio. It occurred on the day that I went to the MPP uh, Coalition Center to speak to the Honorable Joe Anochi. And um, while speaking to, to, to him and broadcasting it, I made the point that media houses will call political parties and, and check the results. That's what I meant. They will check the results of political parties. I think some people have taken the video uh, very seriously, and they should. And they are making the point that I am admitting that um, NPP Coalition Center gave us results and we published. That's, that's the allegation they are making. Uh, as far as the broadcast here on Metro TV was concerned, we never did call the election. When I interviewed Kujo Ponkruma, and he gave me the status of affairs as far as the NPP have, and that was what we always said, that these are the results from the NPP and these are the results from the NDC whenever we had them. And I'll show you a video tonight of Alexander Segbefia in our studio talking about elections and talking about results. And that happens elections all the time. Not many people, uh, journalists, have covered elections since election 2000. I have covered elections 2000, 2004, and 8, and 12, and 16. I've covered a lot of elections. And I'm saying that that's what happens on election night all the time. And I've covered elections on different platforms, you know, on city, on radio, on joy, and everywhere. I've covered elections. So on election night, you would call MPP and say that I have this for Lejokuku. Is that what you have? We, we do that all the time. That's different from the TV or radio station putting its coalition figures together and being able to make projections of the election, which Joy FM have been doing for a very long time. That's completely different. And so the comment I made was to be understood as checking the results with, other, with political parties. And there's no problem with that. In any case, the declaration, as it were, from a media house, as I've kept saying, it's not the reason why the president will be sworn in on 7 January. And, and I know that people are upset, people are unhappy, people are pained. Election results can generate different kinds of emotions. I understand that. But the reality is the reality. The reality is that a declaration from the Electoral Commission, or the reality is that pursuant to a declaration from the Electoral Commission, an event will be organized on the 7th of January according to the 1992 constitution in which a president will be sworn in the the event will be organized pursuant to a declaration by the ec so whatever any media house says is immaterial is irrelevant there are those who say that media houses have been irresponsible by calling elections and they argue that it is because the media houses call those elections that's why the electoral commission also called the election along the size of the media house now we had gone to the, N the mpp to investigate thoroughly how they came by their results and you've seen the video we showed it we don't yet have that opportunity with the ndc but i'm going to show you a video right now that confirms what i'm saying alex segbefia was in our studio here on election night and we were discussing results of his cicado Keten in the uh, western region his information, and, and we started by K. Salato Forsen. I made the point that K. Salato Forsen, from what we are hearing, where are we hearing it from? We are hearing it from the NDC and the MPP. That's why I didn't say it's Metro TV's results. I said K. Salato Forsen, from what we are hearing, seemed to have maintained him his seat. I said that on public television right here. Alex Segbefia confirmed it, and then we talked about the Sikadu Keten, where Alex Segbefia said something uh, about Jogate losing. I said something about the figures that we are getting, and a phone call came through to the studio, originating from the, from the learned member of parliament, that he's leading. And we published all that. It was a bit dramatic. Here is the video. Have a look at this video, and then you can understand what we are saying. There's rumors that Kesel Lato Fossey may have maintained his seat. Th that against, is against also, the odds. And my rumors are the same as yours, so maybe there's a better rumor. <laughs> but in the same way that we've also heard that there's a tight battle now in uh, uh, um, the uh, railway minister's uh, constituency, Yes, uh, the uh, polling station numbers that were coming in for Isikado Doctor, Keten yes. was giving President Akufuado almost with every polling station about a 25 percentage points over his parliamentary candidate. Yes. It was, it was looking very interesting. Yes. Why Akufuado is getting in some polling stations 300 and his parliamentary candidate gets 70. Well, that's looking I'm interesting. That. But, but See, in all cases, she, he was leading uh, Dr. Grace Ayonsu, but very marginally. So the point is that you have to look at it in terms of margins. Mm -hmm. Even on the presidential front, you have to bear in mind that, you know, one pulls the other. Mm -hmm. The parliamentary goes up and it somehow pulls the presidential. In some cases, the presidential goes up and it pulls the parliamentary with it. In some cases, the two are totally divergent. Mm -hmm. So it, that, it, you have to then look at each constituency and the dynamics that are happening there that is creating the whole issue. Mm -hmm. You can't just have a one-size 
fits all in the kind of analysis that you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. From what I am, the trend that is coming, you will find that the gaps between President Mahama and uh, President Akufuado, as of 2016 to now, I humbly submit, are not as wide, mm -hmm. even in seats that President Akufuado is winning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But President Mahama is maintaining the gaps mm -hmm. that he had when, in 2016, that he won, and the gaps were present. So, in a, in, a, in a backward way, he's creeping in on that majority. Mm -hmm. He's creeping in on that majority that uh, President Akufuado had. So, it's early days yet. I am more interested in the figures and what they are saying, and then trying to do some projection. But as to say, sitting here saying, oh, I've won an election. That was for Friday. Uh, <laughs> Friday, when we were all still campaigning, we've passed that now. The, fun, the figures are there. No right. matter how much I wish to win, it's not going to change. The one plus mm. one equals two. Mm. So let's deal with that. <laughs> Please, I've just received a call. Uh, I saw that I was on the phone. Okay. Uh, Alex, Alexander Segrefi Alego. Joe Gatti says I should tell you that he has a commanding lead. And I should tell my viewers that the polling stations that I talked about where polling stations that are in the NDC, the few NDC areas, that okay. he's in a sure commanding leader, Sikado Keten, and that everything is fine. So that's from Jogate. I'm, sur I'm surprised he called. Yeah, he's watching. He's, he's very desperate. He, he's, oh. <laughs> no, he said he's getting calls. It's he's just, not, he's not just, watching. He just, said he's, he's, just everybody's let, calling him. Uh, well, okay. just let yeah. him go. I that mean, Alex Segwefia said that it, he's losing. Oh, I, and people are concerned that... I uh, said... Alex said, are you losing? Did I say... And they said the host also I said that... Police stations that are coming out, Akufado is doing better than you. <laughs> so the Honorable Jogate you know, says that. This is why I don't like to go into the realms of speculation. <laughs> no, but it's okay. I mean, but it's, not but it's fine. He's, he's not upset. He's not, not upset. If you are committed in it, but he's calling from second D. He says yeah. his phone is ringing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, Paul, it's because it's a fluid situation, right? It is, it is. And we're, is, all, exactly. we're all, we're all and grasping we all just numbers. commenting, yeah. you know, yeah. so... Yeah. It, it, for no, but I said, I had yeah, police exactly. stations where... Yeah. So he says that those police stations are in the NDC places. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. by, so it's true. So it's true that <laughs> Akufuado was doing better than him, but it's in NDC stage places. So Akufuado is actually doing well yeah. in those NDC places, better than President Mahama. He's not doing as well. Yeah. But overall, his lead is unassailable. Okay. Yeah. So you saw the video. So this is the point I'm making. That's the point that we've been making for a very long time. That calling a, a, a political party as a political journalist and asking them that, I have Atibubu South. You are losing by 2,000. Do you have that? They say, no, no, wait a minute. We don't have that. What we have is different. You check with this one and check with that one. That's different. That, that happens all the time. It will not happen that for the last in 2020. It's going to happen again in 2024. It happens in America. It happens in Australia. It happens in the United Kingdom. It happens all day long with every election. Pe media houses call people. And when we put out the information, we said here that this information is coming from the NDC or the NPP. Whatever we say, it's not the final authority. What the Electoral Commission says is what is important. So political parties must have their facts or they must wait for the Electoral Commission. And when the Electoral Commission makes a declaration, no matter how we dislike the declaration, if we don't go through the legal process to change that declaration, the declaration of the Electoral Commission, an unchallenged declaration of the Electoral Commission, will stand. That's the, that's the position of the law that we gave to ourselves in 1992, that the declaration of the Electoral Commission will stand. It will stand. It will be the basis on which somebody will become president, even if it's one vote. Professor Mills became president with a difference of 40,000, of 10 million people voting. He was president. No, you can't do anything about that. The results were declared in his favor. He was sworn in as president. His vice president, John Dramani Mahama, was sworn in. They constituted the government, and they ran the show. A declaration of the Electoral Commission, or an unchallenged declaration of the Electoral Commission, will stand. That is the basis on which Ghana will be governed for the next four years. Whatever media say, whatever radio say, whatever NGO say, whatever Cordillo says, whatever international observers say, whatever the Commonwealth says, whatever the churches say, all of those things are at best commentary on the election and they just allow us to follow what is happening. They, have no, they are by no means the final arbiter of the matter. The final arbiter is the Electoral Commission. But because we are a democracy, even the Electoral Commission is not the final arbiter. If you want to challenge what the Electoral Commission says, process, processes are provided for you to challenge that. And when the challenge is successful, the court that pronounces the alternative verdict, 
that will then be the proper verdict. So that's how our country is run. But I can understand emotions are running very, very, very high. I've had a lot of calls, people calling me, be careful, be careful. Some people are not happy with you. Well, we've seen all of that. You know, emotions are running high. Everybody's emotions can run high at, at a certain point. When Manchester United are losing, my emotions run very high. The other day, Great Olympics beat Asante Kotoko. I was terribly unhappy. My emotions run high. So emotions can run high in matters that are very emotional, like politics, like elections. We understand that. But people should hold it there and not say that because Paul said MPP gave him results or NDC gave him results, then it means that's the results that the Electoral Commission declared. No. Certainly not. Speaking this afternoon in Parliament, an authoritative person like Haruna Idrisu, the minority leader, when he led the minority to declare the, um, um, the Techiman South, to talk about the Techiman South results, which we'll be discussing very soon with our reporter, he made a cautious statement about the effects that people should put on, the, on what they were saying because he stated that they are not the Electoral Commission, and they are not. Whatever the minority in Parliament say, the Electoral Commission is the final arbiter by the law. Let's listen to Haruna Idrisu, and then hopefully that will take away all the uh, concerns about some people declaring results and, and all of that. Here is Haruna Idrisu in Parliament today. Be informed, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I am not, and no member of the minority caucus is purporting to perform the role of the Electoral Commission. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission must understand that numbers talk, figures talk, and there are legal implications of those numbers and figures within the meaning of Article 63 and Article 64 of the 1992 Constitution.